Recently, I had a distressing experience at Chicago O'Hare Airport. As a plus-size ambulatory wheelchair user, I faced a significant challenge when trying to get to baggage claim. The only option was to go through a revolving door. I just think that sometimes people set themselves up for failure. And the fact that you're looking at a revolving door as the final boss... Is it because you couldn't fit? Is it because you were just so big? Is it because maybe like it's too... There's just, for some reason, I feel like these people have issues. And it's fine as a human being to have problems with stuff, right? Like today I was walking and I have a problem with my Achilles heel for some reason. Like it just started hurting for no reason. And I didn't do anything differently. It just started hurting out of nowhere. And it prohibited me from walking at my top speed. But I wouldn't say... That's like a big issue for me. I wouldn't say that it's something that's occurring very often. Or I also wouldn't say something like, oh, I couldn't go through a revolving door. Therefore, the airport is fat phobic. Like, I don't know why we, why do we set ourselves up for failure? It's already being a fat person, right? In society in general is going to prohibit you from like a lot of stuff, like 50% of the stuff, right? Just walking in general is going to be very, very tough for you, which is fine, right? Not being able to walk is not like a total issue. I mean, it's not fine, but in the sense of like, if you're in society, we grant a lot of great stuff. I couldn't even imagine not being in society, like being in the wild, you would be completely fucked because there's like nothing you can do at that point, dude. You have to just literally work with the environment at that point. But being in society, we have things like wheelchair access. We have things like ramps. We have things like stairs. We have things like elevators, escalators, things like that for all types of accountability. Revolving doors, I've never heard as like an issue. Usually if there's a revolving door, there's usually a door next to it that you can just open up. But I guess that was too small for her. I don't know, man. Let's, I mean, I'm, I'm interested. To baggage claim. The only option. Uh, yeah. her, be, her saying like, oh yeah, I'm a wheelchair user. It's, it's a lot different, right? She is a wheelchair user, but she's also like for the reason why she, like I saw a guy today that was missing a leg and he was in a wheelchair. Okay. Yeah, I see that. You're in a wheelchair because you don't have a leg. You have one of them, but you don't have both of them. So that makes sense. But when you're this big, okay, the, the wheelchair that you're in has to be very specially made. And then also, dude, it's very... I don't know if you guys have ever pushed somebody in a wheelchair before. It is not as easy as people think it is, okay? Even if they're of good weight, even if they're of average size, it is very difficult to push somebody, even on a flat surface, it is very difficult. Let alone pushing somebody up something, it is very difficult. Now, for somebody like J Bay, who is, I don't know, three, four, five hundred pounds, I do, oh my god, dude, you would need to get like, I don't know, Ronnie Coleman, peak Ronnie Coleman, Ronnie Coleman 2003, or like Eddie Hall. To like push, like I feel like that would be like the ultimate test of strength is to push a 400 pound person, 500 pound person up a ramp at an airport. And thinking about like how compromised of a position that you're in to where you need to do that stuff. Like it's all right. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's totally fine to be disabled. I mean, it's not good, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's fine for people to be disabled. But the fact that these people have put themselves in brackets that are changeable and then complain about it so drastically, like, oh yeah, I'm in a wheelchair and there's nothing I could do about it. Dude, why would you ever want to be in a scenario, bro? I just don't understand it. There are many things that you can do, but you're just like, you just think it's more convenient? Is that what it is, dude? I see on your TikTok that you be eating, dude. You be body slamming food, dude. All I'm saying is like, maybe not so much of that. Significant challenge when trying to get to baggage claim. The only option was to go through a revolving door. I want to know how often she travels and why. Why do you need to travel so much? Like, it's, what, what is your job that requires you to travel as much as you do? Because I'm going to keep it a buck. When I go on her TikTok, she uploads like maybe one TikTok a week, maybe two TikToks a week. And I would say 80% of that TikTok, like she puts these little things at the very end of the TikTok. I'm not even going to play with you. They'll literally be like, I don't know, like, let's say 10, 15 seconds of content of her walking and saying something sassy. And then the last like minute of the video will just be make sure you check out my things. It'll just be like a black screen of all her socials. And that'll be like a minute of the content. It's it's crazy. It'd be like watching a movie for five minutes and then the credits just roll. That's for the rest of the whole time. That's what J-Bay does on her TikTok. And uh, I mean, you could do it. 
but it's 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 terrible it's not good content it's literally just putting a whole brick at the end of your video for no reason like i'm literally watching it like bro is it is that it like is that at the end of the video he's like is there gonna be anything more to that no there is nothing more to it it's just two minutes one minute of nothing hey check out my social media no nothing in it but all right joe j bay whatever bro we let me know let me know what she does to travel press the button to slow it down for people with disabilities but as soon as we entered, we got stuck. Dude, you really got stuck inside of a revolving door? Is that really what happened? How does this happen exactly? You know what? I think J-Bay be lying, dude. I think that she be lying too heavily, bro. Because she had that other video where she said that it was an airport attendee that refused to push her up a ramp uh while while she was trying to when she needed the the wheelchair access right and she didn't record that and then even on this scenario why are you not it seems like you just don't you're not made for the world right it just kind of seems like no matter what you do and especially at airports because it seems like you've been on a roll recently every time you make one of these videos it's always like the most crazy scenario and i'm not saying these scenarios can't happen but i'm also going why the fuck aren't you recording these scenarios this would be great content for literally anybody involved. Me watching it, you having it happen to you is obviously not good, but it would be content for your TikTok. People could look at that and go, oh my God, fat discrimination or whatever, right? That would be great. Why are you never recording it? Why is your husband never recording it? Why is this never something you don't ever whip out your phone? Why? What, you're stuck inside of a revolving door because you're so fat and you don't think that it's a good time to pull out the phone? Or your boyfriend think it's a good time to pull out the phone? Some people document their entire lives and you're over here just coming up with stories. Wait, how did this happen and you didn't record it? Slow it down for people with disabilities. And then the music playing the, the slow piano noise too to make it more dramatic than it actually is. This is sad, but not for the reason that you think it is. It's sad because you're in a scenario where you get stuck in a revolving door. But as soon as we entered, we got stuck. We? Dude, okay, first of all, how big is this revolving door? Did you, usually revolving doors are split up in fours, right? So like a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. And usually, even I, if I'm going in with another person, I would never go in with one door. Did you go into one corridor? Or do you mean like you got, you went into your own and he went into his own and somehow you still got stuck on that? I've never even heard of a revolving door moving on its own. Is that something that happens? I guess. I guess they move on their own, but I feel like that's an anomaly. Most of the time, people push them. I don't know, bro. So I guess they're both stuck in the revolving door. Can you imagine being the flight attendant? Can you imagine being like an employee at like the airport? And they go, hey, there's a lady and they're like really overweight lady and like her really overweight husband. They're stuck in the, they're stuck in the revolving door. And the guy goes, Ah, oh, come on. You stop playing with me. Stop. Come on, dude. What are you talking about? Get the hell out of here. And they go, no, I'm serious. Oh, you're fucking serious, dude? And then you go over there and you just see two people huffing and puffing. Like, the, the whole, the glass is, like, steamed up because these people can't fit through there. So, it's, like, perpetual, it's, like, a condensation inside the environment they have in there. I don't know, bro. It just seems like a crazy scenario. I don't know why you wouldn't whip out the phone, dude. I'm claustrophobic and began to panic, frantically motioning to the staff for help. They just stared at me, offering no assistance. Bro, I just I just don't think this is real, dude. This just seems so ridiculous. This just seems like something that would never happen. I, I I'm sorry, maybe I'm maybe I'm the one that's rude here. I don't know if this actually did happen or not, but I'm gonna err on the side of this didn't happen. Or what are you talking about? Were they looking at you like you like you're a zoo exhibit? Like they're looking at a fucking hippo a hippopotamus on the, on the side of a fucking what are you talking about? You're telling me you and your husband, because you said we were stuck inside of a revolving door, and you're going and then they go. Is that what you're telling me? They just like look at you and they just walk away? What are you talking about? How? How does this happen? Are you serious? Where were you? How does this happen? That's not real, dude. There's no if this was if this really happened and there was no documentation, like a video didn't come out like, oh, J Bay stuck inside a revolving door, you know, trying not to laugh. I don't fucking know. Like there was none of that. You I, Okay, whatever, bro. It just seems ridiculous. It just seems like this didn't happen, but I could be wrong. Critically motioning to the staff for help. They just stared at me, offering no assistance. I, I think that she's probably just saying shit, so that way she can, like, have a, a reason to, just to fight. I think that she's just coming up with just fake shit to fight now. 
A passerby noticed our struggle and tried to help. Uh, what do you mean even tried to help? Like, what do you do in that situation? If it's like a mechanical door, meaning like it moves on its own, it's, it's automated, and you got it stuck. I don't even know what you would even do in that situation. Like, do you just have like 50 people try to push one side of it? Try to manually like, how does this work? What do you mean help you? Like, what are you talking about? Like, like throwing food over the fucking one of the corner pieces? What are you doing? I just, this whole scenario just doesn't make sense. I just don't understand. What the fuck is going on, J-Bay? What is this scenario? A passerby noticed our struggle and tried to help, but the airport staff remained unresponsive. This was my second terrible experience at O'Hare during just one trip. The lack of assistance was not only frustrating, but dehumanizing. I, if, you, if this is something that just keeps happening, like if you go to airport after airport after airport and there's always something, and it's always a problem and things are just transpiring where you just can't control it right and you go it's the airport staff oh it's the airplane oh it's the people around me it's this it's this it's this but you all you you seem to be the one that always has problems i just kind of think that maybe hear me out i just kind of think maybe we need to look in the mirror real quick i just real quick just real quick five six seven eight seconds just real quick when you just recite all of this stuff back and then look in the mirror while you're looking at yourself look up at yourself up and down and then i don't know um critically think for more than two or three minutes about that sit down in that toilet seat and just go is it me am i the re yes yeah it's you it's you i i don't know how you can blame everybody else and you know what's crazy you can sit here and you can pose for a picture, right? I'm guessing that your husband sat there and like took this picture for you, but you couldn't record yourselves inside struggling in the environment that was the revolving door. I, bro, I just can't believe nobody whipped out a phone. I'm sorry, dude. Is there not a video? Can somebody link me a video of this, dude? Are you serious? You got stuck in a revolving door and nobody took a video of that shit? How did that happen? How, J-Bay, please, please tell me how that happened. Highlight trip. The lack of assistance was not only frustrating but dehumanizing, highlighting the necessity for airport staff to treat travelers of all sizes and abilities with the respect and care they deserve. I just want to know what you thought that they would do. Like, how do you think that, how do you think that they would do anything? Like, what do you think they would do? Because you're stuck in a revolving door and you're just like a... What if you're just like a guy that cleans up and he's looking over like, oh, damn, that woman got that fat woman got stuck. That fat woman or her husband got stuck in the revolving door. Ain't my job, dude. <laughs> I'm, I don't even know. I'm on break. I'm on break, dude. That's just ridiculous. I don't even know what I can even do in that situation, dude. She's going to have to live there. What do you want, J-Bay? Huh? What do you want? Because, like, I genuinely have no idea how you can go through these situations and not realize that you are the problem. What? How do I, how do we solve your problem? Please it, disclose this information. By the way, this is what I was talking about earlier. This, this right here, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. And then like this, this will be like a five or six second video. And then you'll see this for like the rest of the video. Like if the video is a two minutes, two minutes, she'll record like 10 or 15 seconds. And then she'll just have this for the rest of that, that, the rest of that, like minute and 45 seconds, if that makes any sense. It's crazy. This was right before the incident I'm about to tell you about. On the first leg of the trip, the wheelchair assistance completely failed us. I was left struggling to be- Bro, it's just so crazy, dude. You couldn't get your husband to do it. Like, I understand that there are people that are employed to do these particular types of things. But to a certain degree, there are going to be people going, dude, no. Like, that is ridiculous, man. Like, I'm going to give you a really good example, okay? When I worked at this establishment, there was a guy that came in one time. And he said, hey- do you take change? And I said, yes, we do take change. He said, I'll be right back. He came back 15 minutes later and he had dropped me off bags of money, bags of cash in coins. And he had a big giant like uh, suitcase. And he was like, can I buy this with this? And I was like, yes, I knew that I could have denied it because you can't, you don't have to take that money. Cause it's like, I was sitting there. I'm not gonna lie to you. I sat there for 30 minutes, counting out his quarters, counting out his dimes, counting out his pennies, counting out his nickels, all the way through, all the way through. And I, I took it as a challenge, but I had to shut off my light and I solely just focused on this guy for 30 minutes, okay? I don't care, I'm leaving in I'm leaving in an hour anyway, it doesn't matter who I help out, but the point I'm making is, if you're an employee and your job description is, 
you need to help people that are in wheelchairs, right? And you go, okay, this makes sense, right? Because not everybody that comes in the wheelchairs are going to be people that need this particular type of wheelchair access, right? So you go, fine, fine. That's my job description. But after a certain degree, you go, I'm not doing this because you're your own human being. You, you, even though this is your job, this is a little bit too much, dude. If a woman comes through and she's weighing three, four, five, six hundred pounds and she's going, push me up, push me up there push me up there and push me down there and by the way you better not be going too fast either because if i can't stop myself i'm gonna hit the wall i just don't want to be responsible for that i just don't not my job description sorry not for me not doing that shit hell no if i was in that if, if i was in that situation nah bro i don't got the mass i weigh 150 pounds it would be literally it would be literally unhealthy unsafe for me and you if i pushed you it's just not plausible it's just not, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I don't know why this woman is so entitled to think that. You couldn't get your husband to do it. You know you're in a weird situation. You know you're not in a conventionally normal tr situation here, dude. This is a very abnormal situation. It is not normal, j -Bay. The trip. The wheelchair assistance completely failed us. I was left struggling to be okay. There is a video about the incident on my page. That experience was already stressful and humiliating enough. Walking, like having to walk up a step because uh, the, the wheelchair attendant just couldn't do it, physically could not do it. And Jay bay is going, it's humiliating for me. Jay bay not everything's about you. And I get it, like you need this particular type of access. And I'm, not, I'm all for wheelchair access, I'm all for, but you can't expect people to stop what they're doing and just cater to you because you need this shit that's that's really ridiculous dude i don't know what to what to tell you than that you're making you're making your life and everybody else's life around you harder because of the way you want to live you do understand that so by the time it was time to fly home i decided to have my fiance push me in the wheelchair to uh, okay like if this was an option i don't know why why was if this was an option why would you why would you wait why would you what was your husband doing the whole time so like you was just so, so hold up hold up let me get this straight you got off the you got off the plane and you you thought you were going to be escorted to the the entranceway or whatever you needed to go to in order to on the wheelchair what was your husband doing was he walking with you was he also in a wheelchair was he pushing himself up the wheelchair was he helping somebody else with the wheelchair i need to know because like you the way you made it seem was your husband was not capable of doing this because he was also physically impeded by, by his weight. I thought your husband couldn't do it. I thought it wasn't even an option because I would have thought that if it was an option, your husband would be doing it, right? No? So you're telling me he could have done it the whole time? What am I missing? Why? Did you just want somebody else to do it? Was he just like there watching you struggle the entire time? Because she literally said she almost passed out when she had to walk to the place herself, which is crazy, by the way. And your husband just like watching you while she while he was eating pretzels. Like, what are we doing right now? Jay Bay, what the fuck is this story, bro? The entitlement is insane. By the time it was time to fly home, I decided to have my fiance push me in the wheelchair to you, like the fact that what do you mean you decided like you had to like rock paper scissors it like oh yeah if if I win then you push me okay whatever bro. avoid any more mishaps picture this me a plus size woman in a wheelchair pushing my suitcase with one hand while my fiance did their best to steer it wasn't the easiest setup but like what I'm seeing right is I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna not acknowledge that j bay is disabled I, I i agree she is disabled right you could be obese and disabled and you can be oh you can be disabled from the obesity fine but the fact that you've went through your life like this the fact that this is just you're just deeming this to be okay this is just like what you're gonna do for the rest of your life and you don't see this as a problem enough to change your life positions like to the, the fact that you're going on these trips and you consistently always have issues literally every single time you always complain about problems and instead of going i need to lose weight instead of going i need to like actually try my hardest to be in shape and not make myself a burden on everybody else instead you go nah nah it's society it's the employees it's everybody it's the chairs it's the pilots it's the workers it's my husband it's the wheelchair for not being big enough it's all of it it's never you huh never you but it seems like you're the only one that's having the problems. Don't you see that? Don't you see that? That it's, 
why is it never you? Why is it never you? Is there nothing you can do to better your situation? Nothing? Really? Not a single thing that you can do? All I'm asking for is some accountability. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Even if you lost 10, 15 pounds, I think that would be better. Go off, queen. With one hand while my fiance did their best to steer. It wasn't the easy- It's just so sad to even say that. Like, oh my god, I had to actually- My husband had to push me. Oh my god, like, I couldn't believe that I had to do stuff for myself. It's just like, it's so crazy to even hear this. Like, I'm sorry, like, this is a- Do you not notice that when you go through the airport, are there not people pushing themselves? Like- with their legs? Is, are there not people trailing the suitcases behind them? Are there not people pushing up the suitcases, walking upstairs? Like, you, uh, when you're saying this shit, like, does it not occur to you that this is, like, a crazy statement? Like, oh my god, I can't believe I have to do, do this for myself. Like, do you understand how crazy that is to say? Okay, maybe I'm the weird one. Am I the weird one for thinking that this is a crazy-ass statement? Like, oh my god, I can't believe I have to do stuff for myself. Like, it's just a crazy-ass thing to say. My ...suitcase with one hand while my fiancé did their best to steer. It wasn't the easiest setup, but we were managing. Yeah. As we were making our way through the terminal, we walked by a group of flight attendants. At first, I thought nothing of it. But then, I heard the unmistakable sound of laughter. Bro, you, 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 this woman is so main character syndrome, bro. So main character syndrome, bro. So I am that girl syndrome so i am the i am the only person that matters in life therefore people should cater to me syndrome that she literally is out here walking past flight attendants and thinking that you're that you you're that important that people stop their day and go and look at you <gasps> oh my god <laughs> do you think that's really happening really j bay all right all right j bay i mean i see it I see it, dude. I see why you have these problems, dude. Because you just don't think you're the problem. Even though you look, people are looking at you, and, oh, well, I'm, you're fine. You, go off, queen. Slay queen edges. I thought nothing of it. But then, I heard the unmistakable sound of laughter. Directed right at us. How do you know that, though? Why do you never record these incidents? Literally, if I was you, I would probably be walking around with a GoPro at all times, dude. Just strap that shit to my forehead and just walk around, dude. Why not? Why not, dude? You always having problems. This shit would be crazy. You know how much content you would have? You travel all the time and all you manage to do is have the same copy and paste pictures and videos over and over again on your fucking TikTok page. Why are you not recording all the time? All the time. You can't even be bothered to put your own vocals in your own videos. Why can't you just be recording, dude? Is it hard? I don't think it's that hard. All right, bro. I mean, if these are things that are actually happening to you, you do realize that you would have a lot of support behind you. You do know that, right? Like, people would be 100%, 100% right beside you, bro. But the hard part is believing it. Because your word over... How many other people, dude? Your word over thousands of people. And you know what? You're just saying shit at this point. I don't know if it's true. These things are so unbelievably crazy that, like, I don't know why you would never record them. I just don't know. I just, it's so crazy to me. They didn't even try to hide it. They. What if they weren't even laughing at you, though? What, what if they were like, I don't know, what if they were watching like an episode of Breaking Bad last night or whatever, or they were watching that that one part from Dumb and Dumber, where what's his name, uh, takes a giant shit on the toilet, and it was like the funniest part in the whole movie, dude. What if they were laughing at that? Why is it always about you, J-Bay? Directed right at us. They didn't even try to hide it. Who are you for me to hide it, first of all? Even if I was laughing at you, I don't give a fuck about you, dude. What? Why do you think, man, this woman is too entitled, bro. She's too entitled, bro. She's too entitled. You're a nobody. I don't know you. If I'm a flight attendant, I don't give a fuck about you, bro. I don't care. What? Dude, I can laugh about whatever I want. You can't tell me what I can and cannot laugh about. First of all, even if I was laughing about you, get over it, grown woman. I understand that you, you want everybody to be treating you like a baby, but you're a grown woman. Grown woman. So you can 100%... I don't care. I just don't care. <laughs> I don't care. And the fact that you think this is an issue is crazy. Grow Directed up. right at us. They didn't even try to hide it. They pointed, laughed, and made snide. What do you mean they pointed and laughed? <laughs> Whoa, look at that woman. Wow! She's so crazy big. What do you mean, bro? What kind of what kind of point in laughter? You didn't record anything? None of it? None of that? That would have been crazy. That would have gone viral. All right. They didn't even try to hide it. They pointed, 
laughed, and made snide remarks, and one said, what the actual fuck? <laughs> My heart sank. This First of all, J-Bay, you really have a lot of... You have a lot... Of, you put a lot of everything on the public, dude. And for some reason... You, you put a lot of responsibility on the public to respect you, but it seems like you put no effort into actually respecting yourself. I don't know why you have this like irresponsibility factor to you, but it's insane. I can't believe that this is actually something you're arguing about. Sting of their mockery was intense. It's one thing to deal with stares and whispers, but outright laughter and public humiliation. It was too much. Nobody should be treated like this. Read the caption for more. People. It's just cr the amount of entitlement this woman has is through the roof, dude. She didn't even know if it was actually about her. And again, how you have literal flight attendants pointing at you, calling you fat and telling you what the fuck, what the actual fuck. And somehow you didn't record any of this. I just refuse to believe it, dude. People are whipping out phones off of literal nothingness, dude. People just whip. People have their phones out default, literal default. And you didn't have enough sense to pull out the phone when people are literally pointing and laughing at you. Flight attendants, people that work for airlines, you just didn't pull out the phone at all? I'm calling bullshit, dude. I'm just calling bullshit, dude. You and your husband, huh? Two people that have phones and you have enough sense to record on flights. You have enough sense to record when you don't fit on flights, but you don't have enough sense to record when you get stuck in a turn, a turnstile, when you get stuck in the revolving door. You don't have enough sense to record when, you, when you're literally being discriminated against. When the, when the person doesn't want to push you up the flight, no, they don't want to do none of that, but you don't, you don't have enough sense to pull out the phone ever on any of those scenarios. I'm calling bullshit. This makes no sense. I don't agree. I think this is a lie. Prove it. Show us the evidence. Receipts. It was too much. Nobody should be treated like this. And by the way, nobody should be treated like this. I don't think anybody was treated like this. I think this is all a cope. I think this is just... I think she's just kind of trying to come up with reasons so she could fight against. I, I, I honestly think her life is so good that she has to find reasons to fight. Read the caption for more. People ask me if I purchased to seats when flying. This is the same copy and paste video that she's been doing for months, by the way. It's not my fault, okay? She makes new videos and she says the same shit and she just does the same video. I don't know if if she thinks that we don't know this, but you got to do other videos, bro. I'm, I'm sick of you just uploading the same shit over and over again. I, I get it. Like, you, it's hard to whip out your phone and record yourself doing stuff, but it's not hard. It's not. I get it. Maybe it's, like, really, really difficult for you, somebody of size, to, like, have to lift up your arm. But, dude, it, you got you to gotta find the time to do it, okay? I'm sick of just having this robot voice and seeing the same video. You couldn't even, re you couldn't even be bothered to record your own voice. Why? Why? Are you that out of breath? Yes. Read the caption for more. People ask me if I purchased to seats when flying. They say it's not fair to the person. This is, I'm sorry, dude. This is like, this is, this is actually cringe material right here. This is meme potential right here, dude. Am I wrong? So if somebody didn't put this into a meme, I don't know, dude. Person who has to sit next. Your husband, I'm not going to say anything. To me, if I do. When I tell them I do. Damn, look at the seat capacity right there, bro. Whoosh, whoosh. They say I'm selfish for taking a seat from another. I don't think she's selfish. If you pay for two seats, good for you. I'm completely all right with that, dude. As long as you're paying for those two seats, good. But if you get the airline, if you get the airline to pay for it, as long as I'm not the one directly paying for it, um, is if the airline wants to pick up the price, they can. I don't know how practical that's gonna be. You're literally encouraging people to be fat, and literally, as long if you have a customer size policy and you're telling you're telling people if you are fat, we'll give you a free seat, then you're literally giving privileges to fat people just because they're fat. I don't get any privileges because I'm thin and I take up like 75% of my seat. So can I get like an extra, can I get 25% off my seat just because? Can I just get that real quick because I feel like I deserve that? No, I can't. But you can get that free seat. Um, and you know what? It might be fine right now. It might be okay for like another year, two years, three years even where fat people are getting free seats. But I wonder how long it's going to be before this gets abused before multiple fat people are just hopping on and suddenly every row you're just seeing two fat people as opposed to three flights three three passengers on each flight i wonder i really wonder dude the fact of the matter is that people can't stand to see fat people have so no 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 it's not that people can't stand to see fat people you mistook that you can't stand because you're fat another 
The fact of the matter is that people can't stand to see fat people happy. So why should we care what they- Bro, what are you talking about? People can't stand to see fat people happy? Dude, nobody cares about you. Dude, J-Bay literally has main character syndrome through the fucking roof, bro. She makes one video and projects so hard. Oh, you just don't want to see me happy. J-Bay, just say you're not happy, bro. I know that you and your husband been looking for that, that third person for your relationship. That guy. That's why you're on the Tinders looking for hot men for maybe some BBC. I'm not against it. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. Do and you, you and your husband. I'm sure we're going to have a great time with that third person. It's going to be so delectable. It's going to be so good. But you're projecting hard. You're projecting real hard right now. And the entitlement is through the roof. Nobody cares about you, J-Bay. Um, I mean, I care about her. I definitely care about you, J-Bay. I care about you so much. I care about you so much, matter of fact. I think I might care about you a little bit more than you care about yourself. Because I just want the best for you. I just want you to be healthy. I want you to stay with me for the rest of your life. I, I want you to be with me for as long as I'm with me. For a hundred years, I want you to be with me. And more if you can go for it. Think. Beautiful. Make sure you Meet follow Jalen, who is dedicated to make air travel comfortable. Dude, look at this fucking shot, dude. Come into the frame, dude, thinking you're a baddie. <sighs> Beautiful. For plus size travelers. He and her fiance were subject to discrimination on their recent flight. It's not discrimination. It's just sometimes the, the flight attendants, like, okay, I knew a dude that was working as a janitor and there was one day somebody went into the bathroom and he blew that shit up like crazy um he missed the toilet by a lot i don't know if he was even aiming for the toilet to be honest he probably wasn't but whereas for me and you we use like a pistol to poop he used like a bazooka and the, the toilet stall was demolished and they asked the dude he was haitian they said hey man um somebody fucking destroyed the bathroom i'm gonna need you to go in there and clean that up real quick and he was like uh, uh, i'm not doing that no i am not <laughs> you you have me all the way fucked up i am not going in there to clean that up and he didn't he he stood on his business and he decided that he wasn't going to go in there even though that was his job description there's just certain things you're just not going to do and you're a free person you if you decide you don't want to do that you can totally decide to do that and when it comes to Seeing somebody that weighs four or five hundred pounds and you see that you're going to have to push them up possibly multiple ramps across the entire spectrum of the airport. I, I'm not surprised that people would have a problem with that, dude. That's that's kind of crazy. That's actually real crazy, dude. So I, I'm not I don't think I mean, you could you could look at it as discrimination uh, if you wanted to. But that's just somebody not wanting to do something like that's just that's really what it was, bro. The fact that you think that you're, you're you want to subject you're not a normal person, dude. It's just you're in a classification of ridiculousness. People tell me every day that I shouldn't be allowed on a plane because of my size. I think that she should be allowed on a plane. If she's paying for the seats. I don't have a problem with that, but you can't expect other people to be OK with it. Like what you what you want is you want your you want to respect yourself and you want everybody else to respect you equally that's never going to happen who are you nobody nobody cares about you to that degree she was forced to occupy only one seat for the she was forced to occupy only one seat first of all if you're buying one seat and you're talking about you were forced to occupy one seat how does that even make sense you bought one seat you bought the one seat what were we supposed to oh man so you take up two seats and the flight is fully booked okay what does that have to do with me? You paid for the one seat, right? So what do you want us to do? Just take away this other person? I mean, it was probably really uncomfortable for that person that sat next to you, given the fact that you were taking up two seats. So I felt bad. I feel more bad for the person that's like next to you, bro. If I'm being honest, I don't even understand what you even mean with forced to take up one seat. Nah, you paid for one seat. Wouldn't be allowed on a plane because of my size. She was forced to occupy only one seat with an immovable armrest that caused her pain and bruises. It's just like sometimes I think these people set themselves up for failure. You went into a position to where you were forced to occupy one seat and there was an armrest. You know, the way the way I like to look at it is, right? The way I like to look at it is if the world is set up in one particular way and you feel like that's not a good thing, but then you're expecting that when you go into those positions that the world's going to change for you miraculously, you're dumb. That's stupid. Why would you expect the world to change around you for, for the sole purpose of you being fat? That's crazy. Why, does the world work like that in any other way? 
because I want something. It should just change for me. I want a bajillion dollars. Are you going to like throw that at me real quick? I'll be in a bathtub. I'll be naked in a bathtub and just toss money at me. Just do that. That's what I want. But you're not going to do that because you, that's that's not plausible. You can't just expect things to happen to you just because. That's ridiculous. And it's really crazy to say forced to occupy one seat. With an immovable armrest that caused her pain and bruises. They also received hateful comments and disapproving looks while traveling. Yeah, but because, uh, bro, if I'm next to this person and you're talking about, oh, yeah, um, I was supposed to get your seat. I would look over at you like, what? What you talking about? What did I paid for this seat. What you mean you were supposed to get my seat? And now I got to sit next to you and I got to have your, your, your thigh on my shoulder through the whole flight. I'm just not trying to have that happen to me, bro. You know, there are people starving. You know that? There are people starving to death in the world. How does that feel? Knowing that you're so big, you can, you're forced to occupy one seat. Damn. It really puts things in, in, into perspective, huh? That dude over there in Africa or like Indonesia or something like that, that doesn't have enough food, you know, is starving, working day in, day out, and you're over here complaining that you can only fit in one seat. That you, that's crazy. Uh, crazy. Instead of letting it go, Jalen took action. She Wait, yeah, took action against the one seat that she was occupying. Started a change.org petition. <laughs> ORG is crazy. I still don't have clear policies in place to accommodate plus size passengers. That's why I've started a petition calling on the FAA to require every airline to have a clear customer size policy in place for plus size passengers. Our petition has. I love that customer size policy. To require every airline and the, to have the a people, clear customer size policy in place for plus. The people that they use, right? They go, oh, customer of size, bro. Look at the look at the sizes of these people here, and then think about J Bay. I think that J Bay might be bigger than all of these people combined insane insane bro i just love it it's just great her petition has gained nearly 4,000 signatures so far wow signing this petition you can help us demand that airlines take by the way the, the petition does nothing it's just it's just you going we think that we should change airlines which i agree oh man i would really love extra seat capacity because you know that me i'm a big meated individual i'll just love to have my dick on the seat over but I can't do that because I'm not trying to pay an extra seat. So I'll just I'll just stand there, be slightly uncomfortable, and pay the price that I'm paid. That's it. I'm okay with it, actually. It's uncomfortable, but it's all right. Concrete steps to make air travel more inclusive and accommodating for all passengers. We work together to Dude, make sure that the travel yeah. industry serves everyone, not just the <laughs> Dude, she did that surfer shit, bro. You saw that? She did that fucking, yeah, dude, whoa. Oh, fuck yeah, bro. Inclusive and accommodating for all passengers. <laughs> work together to make sure that the travel industry serves everyone, not just the select few. Sign yeah, but like when you say that the travel industry should serve everybody, there's limits to everything. Like if you're making it so unreasonable, that'd be like me going like, oh yeah, the travel industry should serve everybody, including me. Uh, and you know, my needs are really specific. I need the flight to be free. I need the flight, the flight to give me money. I need prostitutes walking up and down the aisle, um, just giving out just hand jobs, like to everybody. If you're a woman, two hand jobs. Uh, MK purses galore, just have them out, like have them be complimentary when you walk in. Skincare stuff too, as well. I need that to be given away. Uh, yeah, I just need that like I just think that the airline needs to just give you know They need to compliment all sizes of all people like that's what I really believe So what do you what do you mean? Like that's not possible. What do you mean? I'm I'm thinking I'm what do you mean? I'm taking it too personal like I'm outside the box. What do you mean? I'm in the, I'm the anomaly Nah, nah, I'm just because I'm different doesn't mean I'm not valid chill back I deserve all that stuff. You guys are being ridiculous. I didn't share this petition and let's make a difference did you know that more than 1 billion people in the world are plus size? 1 billion people in the world are plus size, but plus size is like the most ambiguous term you could ever say. That's like somebody saying like, oh yeah. Like plus size literally just means like, oh yeah, bro. Um, Hey, what kind of car do you drive? I drive a car. That's what I hear. I drive car. What does that mean? What is that? What is that exactly? Dude shows up in a moped or something like that. It, it, it's like it's it's a very very ambiguous term plus size could literally just mean five five to ten fifteen pounds over and then this woman it could be a whole bunch of things so no j bay i'm not i don't care if one billion people are plus size if you're 10 15 20 pounds over it's high but definitely not 
two, three, four, five hundred pounds over. That's roughly 13% of the population. Cool. And yet, many airlines still don't have clear policies in place to accommodate. I'm gonna need to know how many, per what percentage of that 13% of the world is traveling? Because you know that most of America has never taken flights. You know that? Like most, most, like more than 50% have never taken a flight ever. And the majority of the world is the same. Most people have, it is an, an anomaly to take a flight. It is. It is 100%. So you have to acknowledge not only not only are you the exception when it comes to taking flights, but you're the exception because of the weight that you're in. You're an exception inside of an exception inside of an exception. You understand that? Like you are so far out of the norm that most people don't even recognize people of this your degree. You understand that? And you you do somehow think that you should be included like all right, I guess. Plus size passengers. That's why I've started a petition calling on the FAA to require every airline to have a clear customer size policy in place for plus size passengers. No one should have to endure the discomfort, embarrassment, and discrimination that often comes. Sometimes people will trade comfort for price, if that makes sense. How many people do you know that are driving busted, disgusting cars because the price was good? How many people do you know that are accepting less than what they think they deserve because the price was good? You know why? Because it's the convenience of paying less. How many people wait for a sale? How many people sit there and go, I'm not going to buy this unless you lower the price? A lot of people. And that's okay. People are, when it comes to, when it comes to plane seat, when it comes to plane seats, most people don't want to sit there. Most people do not want to endure having to sit in the plane seat for hours because most people will agree that plane seats in general are kind of uncomfortable, but they're willing to put up with it because the price was good and they don't want the price to be higher. You understand that, Jay Bay? That's that that there's gonna be there's gonna be some confliction there. With being a plus size passenger trying to navigate air travel by signing this petition, like not everybody's gonna get that free seat. And you can help us demand that airlines take concrete steps to make air travel more. Gotta make sure they're real real durable steps if you know what i'm talking about not that she's going to be taking that she's going to be taking the ramp inclusive and accommodating for all passengers whether you're plus size or not everybody deserves to be treated with dignity and respect it just depends on what you mean by dignity and respect nobody deserves anything you you again you're just coming at this from such an entitlement i deserve an mk i deserve you to call me a big massive meated man i deserve you call me the most handsome man in the entire spectrum of humanity i also deserve all of the money all of it all of it all of it all of it and all the time too do you see that you see how it's like crazy to even say that to say like oh we all deserve respect some people don't i know you don't you i know you don't think that do you think hitler deserves respect huh okay when they fly let's work together to make sure that the travel industry serves everyone not just the select few so dude the select few are the majority, not the select. All right, J-Bag. You are the select few. You are outside the realm of normality. I can share this petition and let's make a difference. True. One of the questions I get asked the most when it comes to flying with Southwest Airlines and using their customer size policy is, how do I book my second seat online if I'm paying for it in advance? I would love to get that free plane ticket, bro. If I can, I just identify as being plus size. Can I just say that I'm like really densely compacted and that if you actually weighed me, uh, even if you weighed me and my weight wasn't exactly where it should be, like if I said I was 400 pounds, but I actually weighed up as like 150, could I just like take, could I just lie or not lie, but just say like, oh, I identify as fat in the future. Could I do that? Could I identify in the fat as like, you know, can I pre-order my fat? No? Okay. Well, I'm here to show you just how show to do Show me how that. to do it. All right, so you're gonna enter all the information like normal, where you're departing from, where you're going, what date you're leaving, and what okay. date you wanna return. When you get to passengers, if you are one passenger who needs an extra seat, you select two passengers. Crazy. If you're traveling- But I'm gonna need probably more than that. Like I probably need three, I'll probably need four four seats. Yeah. Nah, I'm probably gonna need six seats, bro. I'm gonna need my, my row and the row over because I don't want any of those plebeians looking over at me uh, uh, as I lay down on my three stack of seats. So I'm gonna need six seats free. With an extra person, I deserve it. Passengers. I deserve it. Nobody can say otherwise. Then you hit search, pick your flights that you want, the one you're departing from, and your return flight, of course, and continue on to the next step. Hit continue again. Damn, bro. Whoa, a thousand dollars for these seats. And but she's getting. You gotta understand, right? It's realistically like five hundred dollars for all this because if it's a thousand dollars, because she's buying two seats, two seats, right? She's going to get those, two, those, those, the first of every seat compensated back to her. So realistically, this $1,000, 
is about $500 because you're cutting out half of it, right? So think about that. Think about next time how you, when you took that plane ticket and you spent your $500 to get those free, those plane tickets, right? And then think about how J-Bay got four plane tickets, right? And she's paid for the same amount as you did. Think about that. What did you do? Huh? What, are you fat? Nah? Well, too bad. You're not fat. You didn't get a free seat. All right. The next step is crucial. So you're going to enter your normal information in the first passenger slot. Then you're going to duplicate it. But in the middle name section, you're going to add the letters XS for extra seat. Crazy. This second passenger information will be your information duplicated. Putting the letters XS lets them know that you're going to need an extra seat. Then scroll in and enter the rest of your information and click purchase. And that's how you do it. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all that stuff, I would appreciate tremendously. What do you guys think about my shirt? Isn't it nice? Isn't it beautiful? I don't have good clothes. I have very bad clothes. Even this shirt, which I think looks nice, has a hole in it. Do you see it? There's a hole right here, right there. I didn't notice it until later. I have a hole in my shirt. Help me. I am a very, I am an impoverished person. Help me out, okay? Don't don't make fun of me though, please. Anyway, guys, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in green because I think the shirt is green or some type of green, like gasoline green or something like that. But anyway, guys, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You're spectacular. You smell really good. I know your clothes don't have holes in them uh, because you're a better dresser than me. I don't know. I feel like I perpetually look homeless all the time and I don't really care about it, actually. I'm thinking about it now. The fact that I do have a hole in my shirt, I don't really care, honestly. It's, I mean, it's, it's probably not good, but it's not bad either, right? Like, uh, is there really anybody looking at me to that degree where they're judging me like that? In the same way that people judge J Bay, I guess, even though she was lying about that, or if she wasn't lying about it, it's really unbelievable. I'd be like me telling you guys, like, guys, I woke up this morning and you won't believe it, dude. There was, br dude, Joe Biden was sucking me off. I literally woke up and he was on his knees and he was like, "Come on, man." Come on, man. Kamala Harris came in. Strippers, dude. It was crazy. But you see how, like, ridiculous that is? That's the same. I, it's actually probably more believable that Joe Biden was giving me fellatio than Jay Bay and her stories, if I'm being honest. But uh, I know that you are a beautiful person. You smell really good. Um, I love the way your handwriting is shaped. It's much better than mine. I write like I have, like a Michael J. Fox. It's really terrible. People have told me that my handwriting is terrible. But... I know your handwriting is beautiful and elegant and amazing and very easy to read. So that's really great. That's awesome. You're fantastic. You smell great today. But anyway, guys, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and my Discord. And it will all be linked in the description of this video and the description of the channel. All you have to do is click the about on the channel. And then you'll see all those links and you just got to click on them. They're blue. They're highlighted. They'll take you to all my stuff. Please follow me on all those things and join the discord. If you want to have conversations about things that you really care about, because we have conversations about those things because we care about you. Uh, anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. 